Okay, um, this is CAD 214 MEP on Wednesday, October 21st. Today's lesson is on Mod 8. Uh, it's covering plumbing, and in this lesson we'll talk about restroom design and toilets and urinals. So for today's class, um, this mod will be due on October 27th, so you have a week to do this one. We do not have class next Monday, um, so you have extra time in order to do this. The, um, what we'll be doing for this particular mod is you'll be required to lay out uh, stalls, toilets, and urinals per, that keeps, that's supposed to say code given, uh, per code given. Uh, run cold water lines from toilets and urinals to the street connection. We'll be reviewing the code requirements today. These are just limited code requirements that we have. They are in line with um, the usual codes, but there are a lot of codes that one needs to look into when uh, you're laying out bath, uh, bathrooms, especially in commercial buildings, and especially having to deal with ADA uh, requirements. Uh, but we have some that are listed here that you will be required to use in your particular drawing. Once you finish that, you're gonna head, go ahead and submit that um, in your Revit files as usual. You can also make these uh, PDF sheets. It just makes it easier to review. So that's what we're gonna kind of go over today. Uh, in our file section, we have a plumbing folder that's um, up now. I just have one sheet in there real quick for you to look at. So if you wanna open up, open that up, we're gonna go over that today. It looks like this. And it's just a typical um, plumbing system for a house, for residential. Uh, the additional that, that are on here, as opposed to what we'll be needing for the project that we'll be doing, it, which is commercial. Uh, obviously, we're not going to have a bathtub or a washer machine, but most of the other, or a dishwasher, but most of the, the general requirements on here and the general outline on here shows you pretty much how a plumbing system will work. So let's start pretty much with the water in. So you're always going to have one main um, water meter going in, one main water line going into the house. Uh, for example, it's coming from the street here. You'll get your, your water meter is usually between, um, in New Orleans, between your sidewalk and the uh, street itself. Um, so that's usually where the meter is. It has the water meter here on the inside, but usually you're gonna find this outside. Um, but we're just going to run that water line from the exterior of the building into the building. Uh, here you see that the cold water line goes into the water heater. We're going to show one going into the water heater. Um, obviously only one will come out of the water heater. Hot water is coming out of the water heater. As we follow these lines down, you'll notice that the uh, this will be running through the walls at this point. You wouldn't actually see them, it's just open so you can see it, but the pipes will be running through the walls. Um, we have one going to the washing machine, um, and then we'll have one go to the utility sink. It goes up through the exterior walls to the second floor, and you can see how the water lines just kind of follow um, and attach to all the different uh, particular um, appliances that need them. Uh, then we've got the hot water line. Hot water line comes down and does this, follows the same pattern and attaches to the uh, um, particular items that need them. Obviously, you're not going to have hot water go to the toilet um, and you're not going to have cold water go to the dishwasher. So uh, this is just how pretty much what we're going to do um, for this assignment is we're just going to run the water lines to the different pieces, to the different components in class. And then uh, next week, we'll go ahead and work on the sewer line. This line right here, as you can see, there's a waste pipe and a uh, vent pipe. Uh, the waste pipe is obviously taking the water away from the house. One thing that we're going to, that you should notice is that there's always a slope on these pipes that they're sloping away from the house. They're actually taken away from the house through gravity. Uh, the water pipes are actually pushing the water through the house through pressure, they're under pressure, but the other ones are from through gravity. Uh, that's also why you're gonna see this vent pipe that's connected right here. Uh, you're gonna have a, even a vent pipe in your house. Uh, and this is open at the top. And what this does is it allows the air pressure to push the water down as well. 
the best way I can describe it is think if um, if you took a straw and you had your finger and you put your straw in a, in some water and you put your finger on top of the straw and then you took it out, how that water stays in that straw. Um, but then if you take your finger off it, it evacuates. Think of it like that. If somebody, if that's why if there is a clog in the top of this pipe, you're, it would be very difficult to get the water out of the house. Um, so that's why it always has to have that open vent pipe. It opens that vacuum and it, it allows the uh, gravity to force that, uh, to take that, you know, sewer water out of the house. Um, but this is a very basic, uh, simple plan that I just want you to look at, especially using the water lines as an example of how to run your water pipes today. Um, we'll have a little bit more on this uh, in the next class, but it is just kind of a good example of how we're going to run our water lines. So water line, cold water line in from the street, uh, attaching to all the appliances that need it, all the areas that need it. Uh, and then the same with the hot water line, hot water line running from the, um, from the water heater itself. Any questions about that? It's pretty straightforward. And the plumbing systems and how to do them in Revit are pretty straightforward as well. Uh, what gets a little confusing is how we're gonna get those water lines to run in. And it's just kind of takes practice at how to get those to run. And it's just a matter of, you know, like I said, practice for that. Uh, but you'll get the hang of it. It's not, uh, it's actually kind of easy work. It's, it can be a little fun too. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and close that. I'm gonna go ahead and jump into the information for our code requirements. So you'll open this up and you'll read through this in order to start laying out your uh, stalls. So we're gonna create bathroom stalls. We're gonna add toilets and urinals um, to the model today. And then we're gonna run the water lines. So just, I want you to read through this and use these as a guidelines in order to create your bathroom plans. Um, just some of the examples here. Uh, I'll just read through all of them. You can read through them, you know, as you're doing it. Um, for your general toilet requirements, uh, the size for a separate toilet compartment should be at least 36 by 66 inches with a swing out or pocket door. So that's what we're going to be creating. Uh, these different ones, um, different. Uh, urinal stalls or different bathroom stalls with this measurement. So that's the recommended size. Code requirement is only 30 by 60. You'll have, uh, and you can decide if you're going to do a 36 by 66 or a 30 by 60, but it cannot go below 30 by 60. Uh, the minimum space of 21 inches must be planned in front of the lavatory, toilet, bidet, and tub. Obviously, we're just going to be focusing on the toilet, this one. So that means from where the toilet is to the front part of the wall, you have to have at least 21 inches. As long as you follow this code information up here, you'll meet that. Uh, another important thing to look at here is the minimum distance from the center line of the lavatory to the wall is 15 inches. Center line of the toilet to the wall should be 15 inches. And then the same here, um, freestanding or wall hung lavatory. Uh, minimum is four inches. Uh, we should have plenty enough room to fit all these requirements, but what's real important is when we get into our smaller, tighter spaces is to follow these as well. Um, and then we also have the same type of guidelines for our urinals. Um, urinals are a little bit different, and uh, you'll see that as you read through those. Um, and these are some of the urinal requirements that you're going to need to do. Um, and some of, especially the ones with the elevations, uh, ele the elevations of the urinals and the toilets come in usually at the, the correct height. Does this make sense? So what I do is before, as you start laying out uh, everything, I, I keep referring back to these to make sure that you have the correct measurements between each one. All right, so let's see how we're gonna apply this. So let's jump into Revit. So the first thing we're going to do is go to a new project. And this one, we're going to use mechanical template as well. I want to hit OK. And we're going to use that same project that we've been using all along. So we're going to go to Insert tab, Revit link, and we're going to link that same project that we've been doing before. Before I do anything else, I'm going to save this. I'm going to go to File. Save as project. 
go back to my plumbing. That before I start anything else. So in our first floor plumbing plan, we're going to use this as our mechanical room. This will be where our water heater is located. This will be the men's room and this will be the ladies room. In our second floor, we're gonna have this as the mechanical room. This is the men's room. And this is a gargantuan ladies room. So what I would recommend is that you can come in here and um, we'll add another wall here and another door here so we kind of make this a little bit smaller. Um, not a lot of thought was put into like men's room, ladies room, in the mechanical room when we laid out these. So we'll just use them as is, but we can fix that and we'll get to that in a second. So first off, let's start in plumbing um, floor plans. Just to make this a little bit easier for me to work with, I'm going to turn off this floor pattern because I just, I just don't, I think it's easier to work without it. So I'm going to go to visibility graphics and hit BV. I'm going to turn off that floor pattern. So it's just a lot cleaner for me to look at now. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lay out some um, toilets in the ladies room. Um, I'm going to do four toilets and four sinks. Uh, once again, this is like a really big ladies room, but we're just going to go ahead and use what we have in place. So um, let me go to systems systems tab. I'm going to go to my plumbing and piping a panel and we're going to start with plumbing fixtures. So we click on plumbing fixtures. It's going to tell you that there are no plumbing fixtures loaded in this project. And we do you want to load one now? Yes, we do. So then it's going to come up to our families. I'm going to start in US Imperial and we're going to go down to plumbing. Then we're going to go into MEP. We want to use the MEP ones because those are the ones that have the, um, the piping connections that are live. Uh, we're going to go into fixtures. And for this one, we're going to water closets. Uh, we can use flush tank. There's a couple other options here. Um, but this one is more of an industrial one, this, this floor mounted or uh, even the wall mounted one, but you can use any one you want. I'm just going to go ahead and use this flush tank for it. And then we've got that active. So I'll drop that there. I want to attach it to this wall, so I want to rotate this. I'm going to click on it, go to my rotate tool. Just rotate that 180 degrees. I'm just going to place them right here for now, and then I'll go back and measure my walls when I lay those out. But I'm going to lay out four um, toilets at this point. I'm just using my copy to duplicate it. So click on that, make it active, click on copy. Copy is not as efficient in Revit as it is in AutoCAD because you have to do multiples. 
but it's still easier than having to rotate each one. So now I've got to four toilets laid out. Um, as you start working on your bathroom, if you have room for larger toilets, you can, uh, I mean, more toilets, you can do that as well. We're just gonna do four as an example today. Now we'll just move these into place. I could definitely fit another one in here, but we'll just leave that as is. So I've got my toilet set. They're not really spaced out very well. I just kind of stuck them in there arbitrarily for now. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and draw my toilet stalls. So I'm going to go into architecture. I'm going to go into wall tool. And we're just going to use the generic five inch for here. For those of you who are in architecture class, you can create your own wall if you want. Um, but we can just use the basic generic five inch um, to start. So I'm just going to uh, draw one line across in front of there. Now I'm going to check the measurement with my temporary dimensions. Let's do this one. So that comes to five foot eight. And I don't want it to be a strange measurement like that. So that's 20 foot. So I'm going to change that to five foot six. Oops, move the toilet, not the wall. One of the hardest things sometimes, especially working in MEP when you're trying to lay out walls, is trying to get the measurement you want. So I'm just going to put this temporary wall here, taking me this measurement. So I can click on this one, and then I can set my nodes to where I want them to be. Not working with me, are you? All right, I must delete that. Usually the person that is doing the layout to the bathrooms is not doing the stalls. That's usually an architect, which is why it's kind of a little bit of trouble here. So. Get that as close to five feet as you can, and we'll come back to that. Sorry, guys. All right, next thing we want to do is go into walls, and we want to do our dividing walls. Here we do have our temporary dimensions in order for um, that to work. So if we go back to our information here, uh, the minimum size is 30 and the maximum they would recommend is 36. We actually have a lot of space in this one and we're at four foot six right now. Actually, we can continue to make that four foot six. So we have lots of space there. So we can lay out the other four, four walls. Yeah, all these should be the same size, and you can adjust those as needed. Make 
check the math on those for when you lay those out. And we can center all those within that space. So you want to do at least four for the ladies room. You can do uh, three for the men's room and then you can also include the urinals for the men's room as well. So let's drop in a couple of urinals uh, for the men's room. Systems tab, plumbing fixtures. We're going to go to load family. We'll go back to plumbing, MEP, fixtures, urinals. And you can use either one you want there. And lay those out how you'd like. We'll just drop a couple of those in. There's lots of room. This is not going to be a super challenging bathroom because we have lots of room in here. Let's go to 3D real quick and see how that works. Here you see we have our toilets dropped into place and our urinals. So with those in place, we can go ahead and start running the water lines. What we're gonna do is have the water line kind of come out here through um, the mechanical room because we're gonna have the water heater here. So we're gonna have a water line coming into this building and then it's gonna run along this wall right here. So relatively easy. And usually your plumbing walls that this stuff is attached to is a lot thicker, but um, usually about six inches, but I think the five inches will work for what we needed to do now. Uh, so what we're gonna do to run the water lines is we'll start with this one up here. If you click on that, you'll notice that we have this um, symbol right here, which is going to give us a live line, much like when we had the wiring. So if we click on that, you'll see that that becomes available. And we can just run our water lines this way. And then I'm gonna have my water heater here. Then I can go back to the other toilets, grab the same line and we'll just pull those together and it's going to add all of our T junctions where we need them. If you change the detail level to fine, it looks a lot better. Go ahead and click on that toilet again. Same symbol, we're just going to pull that back and just go ahead and connect together. Same with this one. Pull those together like that. We'll jump over here to the sinks, the urinal, sorry. Go ahead and click on the urinal, same symbol. Let's try running our pipe first. We'll run our pipe down this way. So when you want to run just the pipe, you go to the pipe tool. We'll attach it here and run it through this wall. Let me try a different urinal. Some of these are very finicky. Try this one. Okay. 
All right, for some reason these aren't working for the water connections on this. I don't know if that's a, I don't know what's going on with that. Uh, they should connect. Can that be connected in 3D? Oh, yeah, actually what's going on with that um, is this is actually running up. Um, with them running up, we need to actually lower the level. I didn't mean for that to run up like that. This, uh, this is one of the ornery parts about um, this program. So it's not gonna connect because these are two, this pipe is higher than this one. This pipe should not be that high. This pipe is at uh, elevation of one foot, six and a half inches. I'm going to change this elevation to one foot six and a half inches. All right, let's jump back to that. And hopefully you work. No, you're still not working. All right. All right, my pipe right here is not at the same elevation, so I'm going to change that to one foot, six and a half inches. And you're not working. So. Tell you what, let's just run your lines to your urinals like this, and let's and I'm gonna come back next time and kind of fix that. I don't know why that's not working. Um, I think it's just the elevation, and I need to um, I need to go back and take another look at that closer. Notice that this one up here is this when they have this symbol right here. This is the symbol that's it's either running up or down. Um, and then when we go to 3D, we can definitely see that that is, oh, I put this right here. This is not going to work. Yeah, delete that. All right, yeah, why don't we do this? Just run the toilets for me. Place the urinals. And then don't worry about running the water line to the urinals. We'll do that next class. But at least you'll have all that stuff laid out and then we'll work on placement of those later on. Um, it's just a matter of getting all of our elevations and our heights to the right uh, height, which is why this is not working, but um, I'll need to go back and take a look at that when we get a chance. So to start, go ahead and lay out your toilet um, compartments like this, lay out your um, toilets here, lay out your toilets in the men's room, uh, you can place the different urinals, but run the water lines from the toilets to the um, to the mechanical room itself. And then once we get that water heater in, we'll run from there. Does that make sense, guys? All right. Um, so that's it for today. This part of the assignment will be due next Tuesday at four, and then the next class we'll have is next Wednesday, so a week from tonight. So you should be able to get this knocked out pretty quickly. Any questions, y'all? Okay, if there's no questions, that's it for today, and I will see y'all next week. All right. Thanks, y'all. Bye.